Welcome, this is Coop from Garage and Reviews, and today we are reviewing the Freak Athlete multi -slay. This is a sled designed to do both pushing and pulling. Many sleds that we see are designed for one or the other, or they're primarily for one or the other, or they can be used for both, but they kind of got to be used in a weird way. This one is really, I think, inspired by this whole knees over toes guy movement that's happening with people working more on their lower body to bulletproof their knees, strengthen all the tendons and muscles around their knees, because a lot of people have knee problems. And one of the things that more and more people are doing, sled pushes and sled drags, myself and Included. And this is designed to be a more budget-friendly sled and a more lightweight sled, which I think is more important than many of the ones that are on the market. Now we've reviewed other things from Freak Athlete. They have a Nordic bench that we really recommend because it is very similar to the value proposition here. A good price, functions really well, and also doesn't take up a lot of space. And that's really where this sits. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna compare this to many others that are on the market from higher end and lower end. I'm also gonna talk about just the use case and how it feels and also tell you how it works specifically for pushing and pulling because that's really what you're gonna be using this for, not just one or the other. Now, before I get into the review, this was sent to us free of charge by Freak Athlete. I just like to let people know that up front. It's not gonna change what I say. You'll have to watch this review and all our others, but I think it'll give credence to what we do. I will give you my honest take. In addition to that, if you'd like to purchase this, we'll put links below the like button where you can purchase it. Doesn't increase the cost you pay, but does give us a small commission. Thank you. Let's start with the design of this. This is designed to be used as both a push and a pull sled. Now, the design is really taken after most pull sleds that are out there. I'm thinking of sleds like this one. This is the Rogue S35E. There are many that are similar to this one. This is one I've had for a long time. This is the first sled I bought. This thing is a beast, but it can only be used as a pull sled. But people don't want just a sled that they can use to pull. They also want that they can push. So when you're pulling it, this has some advantages to say the Rogue S35E for pulling specifically. One is it's got two carabiner holes. So the value to that is rather than having to spin it around, you can quickly detach and put it on the other side if you'd like. Or if you're doing partner work, you could both be strapped to it. One's walking in reverse, then the other one walks in reverse and you kind of just hang out while that happens for rest and back and forth. Now, the other advantage to this that often is not found on that type of sled, the Rogue S35E, is it also has the ability to take plastic skis. This is UHMW plastic that's bolted to the bottom. As you can see, they've got flat headed screws. If you're gonna use this on concrete, it does wear down. Like that's the thing with this plastic, if you're using it on concrete, just understand you are going to have to replace those after a while because they will wear down because that's a lot of friction you're introducing on a very hard surface. But it's very nice that they include them because a lot of people want to use this on all surfaces, even their driveways. And the annoying part of these sleds is they make a lot of noise and they also just mar and scar your driveways or your neighborhood and can annoy your neighbors. But with the UHMW skis, it's slicker and it also doesn't make as much noise and doesn't tear up the road, which your neighbors will like. Now, one of the other big benefits to this is how lightweight it is. This is about 30 pounds. When you add some of the handles and stuff, it ends up being probably around 40, 45 pounds. By and large, most sleds that are out there and people are using are much heavier. Like one of the most popular sleds in the world is the Rogue Dog Sled 1.2. It's 103 pounds, not including when you add all the accessories on there, and it's cumbersome. But really where this works is the home gym owner that's moving it out from the garage, out to the street, along with plates, and doesn't want to spend 30 minutes setting up. Like you want something that's quick, useful, and you can quickly get out there and use both. Another thing I'll mention while I have it up here is the pull strap. This pull strap, when I first started doing reverse sled drags, there was really like no companies making these. I had to buy a bunch of parts from Spud Inc and kind of fashion my own together. This one comes standard with your purchase. And this is actually a really good pull strap. Like this isn't just something that's very cheap and they threw in there. Sometimes that happens with the straps because they don't really market them. They're just like, hey, here's another accessory. No, this is one that I actually use is thick, uses box stitching and is like gonna last. This thing's actually really nice. Now let's talk about it on the push sled side. 
So first off, the way that you add resistance is with this plate post. This is one of the longer plate post sets available. It's a 20 inch plate post, so you can store more weight on it. And you're gonna need quite a bit of weight because it's not a very heavy sled. And it just gives you a lot more room to work with if you're using bumper plates or if you just wanna get really heavy with it. Now, the other way that this is modular and the way that you add handles to it for pushing is like this. So it's like this, in order to ship cheaply and also to, to be modular, the, all these pieces are separate. So you can store it away easily and also ships flat altogether. So it's cheaper for you. But the way this works is you place these in here. The original design only had one hole. And what that did is it caused it to like teeter because they have two holes on both sides now. It's much more stable. Then come your handles, you place your handles in there. By the way, I love this addition. It's got their Freak Athlete logo on the end cap, which is pretty cool. It's like a barbell end cap. They don't have it on the end of the play post. I thought that would have been nice if they put that on there too, but I just think it's a nice addition that's on there that I, I didn't see online and I haven't seen mentioned yet. And so now you can use this like a Prowler type sled. It's much better than the old version. The two handles are very nice. And also if you just want to put it on the other side quickly, I mean, it's very easy. You just take it out and then put it back in. If you put a lot of weight on this, it's not a huge issue. Just understand like there is more wobble inherent due to how thin the rectangle is of this, but generally I wouldn't be worried about it. And when we've used it, it didn't cause an issue. Now to the quality. This is using full steel construction. It's got powder coat. It's a textured powder coat. It's not like the same level of powder coat as what we see from like Rogue Fitness, but it's a good powder coat. They're not using any stickers, something I really love. They have their logo laser cut into the side on both sides and that's it. It's very simple, utilitarian design and very functional. One thing to understand, when you first get these in, like the powder coat on the bottom, that's gonna end up on whatever surface you drag it on if you don't have skis. So make sure you're not doing it on your driveway. Make sure you're doing it on the road or something like that so the city can deal with it, not your wife. Okay, to speak to some of these accessories, what comes standard is the belt, this sled frame, and then the plate post. That's it, at the base price of $150. So this is more a budget-friendly sled, like much cheaper, especially than some of the silent ones out there, and pretty competitive, although it depends on which model you get to the Rogue. So like Rogue S35e is 125 bucks. You add an additional 25 bucks for a strap, so it's around 150 bucks, and it's offered as a three ships free item, but this has some things that that one doesn't. If you're just gonna get this for like the polling style and you're not gonna use the push sleeves, you can get cheaper sleds out there that are in this style and can do mostly what this can do unless you really want the plastic skis. But really where this gets interesting is both. One of the things that's nice about this, because you have handles on both sides and carabiner clips on both sides, is you can put the handles on the same side you can then put this on this side, and that means you can drag and push it without having to turn it around every time. Like, sounds like, ah, oh, that's not that big of a deal. And it's not, except when you're doing this a lot every day, and you're doing a ton of reps, it just gets kind of annoying if every time you've got to flip it around or run to the other side and like just mess with it. It being on both sides is ideal which is why I think this is still interesting when you compare it to others on the market. I think the sled that this most competes with is the Rogue Slice sled. The Rogue Slice is 195 bucks and designed to be both a push and pull sled. The Rogue one only has a carabiner clip on one side and handles on the other. So every time you're gonna have to flip it around or run to the other side if you wanna use it like most people do, which is reverse sled drags and then push. But I will say, just I want to be honest in this review, the quality of this is not as good as, say, the Rogue Slice Sled. This, they say all over their site that they're an American business, which is cool, but they don't put anywhere the country of origin. This is an imported product. I don't know where from. The quality is not as good as what we see from a Rogue product. And the price is honestly pretty similar to what Rogue's offering and Rogue offers for free shipping. So all of that said, I basically just wanna give you this is what I think about this and this is who I'd recommend it to. If you're doing a lot of reverse sled drags and want the ability to do a reverse sled drag and then push on the same side, this is what I would use. But if you're in this price range, for me, I would purchase this over the Rogue Slice Sled, even though the Slice, I think, is a better build quality and also can be cheaper. And the reason would be, it's pretty simple, this has a carabiner on this side. So I could just clip, that may be lazy to some of you, but I could push and then sled drag all on the same slide. I would love it if Rogue would add a carabiner clip on the other side and just make it easy so you could do that and not be on either side. 
But until that point, like this, this is the one I'd recommend. They're offering a lifetime warranty, which is cool. They're also a new business, so it's like, uh, how much stock do you put in a lifetime warranty? But it's nice they're putting their name behind it. If you're this spring or summer looking to open your garage and do more sled work, I think this is a great entry. I think you may get tired of the noise and everything like that that comes with these sleds and you may upgrade in the future. But to get started, I think this is a great option that's lightweight, easy to take in and out of the garage, can be used for pushing and pulling. I'd love to hear it if any of you have gone with the magnetic option after using one of these, one of the silent ones, and if you'd recommend it to other people or you think most people are fine just using the cheaper version that makes more noise and scars their driveway. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. This is Coop from Garage and Reviews. I'll see you next time. Peace.